Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can identify potential out multivariate outliers in SPSS using the squared Mihalanobis distance. Now before we get started, I want to mention that underneath the video description you will find a link to a PowerPoint that I've put together on this topic. And that PowerPoint goes into a lot more detail than I'm going to be covering in this video. Um, Additionally, you will find a link to an SPSS data file uh, that I'm using in this video, so you can download that to follow along. And the data is coming from an article uh, entitled Relationship Between Anxiety and Burnout Among Chinese Physicians, a Moderated Mediation Model. And you can find this at the Plus One website, and I have a, a link in the PowerPoint uh, to that article if you want to read more. So let's go ahead and open up SPSS and begin our demonstration. So here we have our data file and the variables that I'm going to be uh, using in this demonstration uh, are anxiety, burnout, uh, this positive coping and negative coping variable right here and I'm also going to use this variable uh, to articulate a point uh, shortly. So let's say that I wanted to run a multiple regression analysis uh, where I um, am predicting uh, burnout based off of uh, scores on anxiety, positive coping and negative coping. And uh, I want to generate Mihalanobis distance uh, values associated with the cases in my data set. Well, to do that, I would go to Analyze, Regression, Linear, and then select Burnout for the dependent variable, Anxiety as the independent, uh, Positive Coping, and also Negative Coping as independent variables. So to generate the Mihalanobis distance uh, value, or basically the squared Mihalanobis distance, I'm going to click on Save right here and then go to where it says distances and click on that. Now, although it does say dis, uh, Mahalanobis right here, really what's going to be generated is a new value in the data set uh, that is the square of the Mahalanobis distance. So sometimes that's a kind of a confusing point, uh, but basically uh, what's generated are the squared Mahalanobis distance values, and that's typically what is used when it comes to evaluating uh, cases as potential uh, multivariate outliers. Now I also want to mention too that the Mahalanobis distance or basically the squared Mahalanobis distance um, is computed from the independent variables in our model. So it has nothing to do with the dependent variable. It's solely with respect to the independent variables. And basically what's going to happen is is that we're generating a distance measure between uh, the cases in our data set and the multivariate mean of those variables and basically that multivariate mean is referred to as a centroid. So what we're going to be doing in our demonstration then is trying to evaluate uh, how far the individual cases are from the multivariate mean and determining if it's far enough to consider a case to be a multivariate outlier. So let's go ahead and uh, click on continue and then on OK and you'll see that in our output we get the standard regression and uh, regression output. You'll see under residual statistics that I've got Mihalanobis distance that's given right here. There's the minimum and maximum value. And uh, more importantly, what we're, going to, what we're going to do is go into the data set. And when we go to the end of the data file, you can see that we have a new variable called uh, MAH underscore one. That's just basically those squared Mihalanobis distance values. Now, I, at this point, I want to mention that, uh, as, as I said before, uh, the dependent variable in the regression model that I just ran is really irrelevant when it comes to trying to generate those squared Mihalanobis distance values. So to, to show you that, or show you what I mean by that, if we go back and we rerun this analysis, and we, let's say we move uh, burnout out of this box and we put uh, C6N uh, as a dependent variable and click on OK, you'll see that we get the same exact values as we did before. Or if I put in just uh, any other variable, uh, let's, let's just do one more just to really drive this home, uh, you can see that all of those values are exactly the same. So again, the Mahalanobis or, or the squared Mahalanobis distance values that are generated using the regression module uh, only pertains to uh, distances with respect to uh, cases in relation to the centroid for those independent variables. And because of that, it actually makes um, we can use that uh, regression uh, module anytime we want to evaluate 
um, Mahalanobis distances for individual cases irrespective of the original multivariate procedure that we are using. All we have to do is just uh, plug in the variables that we want to uh, I, uh, use to identify potential outliers and some uh, dependent variable. It can be any dependent variable from your data set or a randomly generated uh, variable and you can generate those uh, squared Mahalanobis distance values. Now let's say that I want to test whether a case um, is uh, significantly uh, or deviates significantly from the centroid uh, for those independent variables. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is get rid of uh, those two variables right there. Uh, what I can do is generate a significance test, uh, basically a p-value using the chi-squared distribution. So to do this, what I'll do is go up to the transform button right here, click on compute variable, and I'm going to reset this and walk you through it. So under target variable, I'm going to create a new variable. So I'll, I'll just give it a name. I'll call it sig for significance. Um, it doesn't really matter what you name it. But basically what we're going to do is generate p-values uh, from the observed chi-square values from our data, or the squared Mahalanobis distance values from our data. Uh, and uh, under numeric expression, I'm going to type in 1 minus and if you go under this button right here, function group, for CDF and non-central CDF, you'll see down here it says CDF dot uh, chi-square, basically. And so this is referring to the cumulative distribution function for the chi-square distribution. I'm going to click on this, and you'll see that um, we get the function as well as, inside the parenthesis, two question marks that are separated by a comma. So for the first question mark, I'm going to put in the Mahalanobis distance value that was collected, uh, that was computed. So I'm going to double click right here, or actually I can just use a little arrow and move it over. And uh, for the second one, I'm going to remove that uh, question mark and then type in the number of independent variables from that regression that I ran. So we had three independent variables, so we're uh, going to type in the three there. And uh, if you want uh, more description, uh, this is it right here for that particular function. So let's go ahead and click on OK. And now you can see that I have a column containing p-values. And you can just basically compare those p-values against an, al an alpha level, um, say 0 0.001. That's a very conventional level. Or you could even do sort of a, um, a Bonferroni uh, correction for uh, the alpha if you want a, a more conservative um, test. Basically, let's say I set um, um, my test for each individual case, um, the alpha at 0 0.001. So I can kind of scroll down here and look for any value that's 0 0.001 or less. And here's one right here. Uh, this is basically a case 151. Um, you can see that uh, the p-value is 0 0.000019, so that's clearly less than 0 0.001, so this might be considered a prospective uh, outlier. But when I, when I use the term prospective or potential outlier, it doesn't mean that a case necessarily is an outlier just because it meets that threshold, but it is maybe perhaps a case that we might investigate further. And uh, here's another case right here. This is um, case 1119 uh, right here. So this might also be a potential multivariate outlier. Now, in addition to using sort of this significance testing approach to um, uh, identifying potential outliers, we can always also use graphical approaches with the uh, squared Mahalanobis distance. So in the, in the uh, PowerPoint, I provide two demonstrations. One's based on an article by uh, Arafin from 2015 on uh, using the squared Mahalanobis distances to evaluate multivariate normality. Um, but sort of pivoting off of that, another easier way, uh, and this is actually the second approach that I uh, demonstrate in the PowerPoint uh, in terms of the graphical approach, is to just generate a QQ plot where we plot um, the um, 
the uh, squared Mahalanobis distance values against an expected chi-square distribution, assuming uh, the degrees of freedom that we're using that we used uh, previously for this significance test. So to show you what I mean by that, um, basically what we can do is we can go to analyze descriptive statistics and then go down to QQ plots. So if I click on that right there, I can move our squared Mahalanobis distance uh, variable over to the variables box click on test distribution and scroll down scroll to uh, where it says chi-square and then for the degrees of freedom we are going to use the number of independent variables from that regression so uh, essentially we'll select three right here and then we will click on OK and so now what we get is a uh, QQ plot and essentially if our data was um, following a chi-square distribution, we would expect the data, the observed values and the expected values to fall in this straight line that you see uh, shown right here. Instead, you can see our data is trailing off to the right of that line. Uh, so that's that's giving us some indication that perhaps the data is not uh, multivariate normal. And also, we can use this to identify potential uh, outlying cases. So if I double click uh, in this box right here and then go up to elements, I can click on data label mode right here and use this little uh, this little icon move it over the, this this extreme dot right here and you can see that we have case numbers so we have case numbers 150 422 and 119 those three cases happen to have the same uh, squared Mahalanobis distance value and so all of these are tied in terms of having the largest um, uh, squared D value and so these three, you know, given what we see in terms of um, in terms of where they're falling within the distribution, those three would obviously be candidates as potential outliers. Uh, you can see this other grouping over here as well. If I click on, um, if I, well, let's see, we'll click that off, and let's say I click on this one right here. You can see that we only have one case. That's case 588 right there that might be a candidate. You can see right here, if I click on this, there's actually two. There's, um, or excuse me, there's uh, 371. It's maintaining that 588 for that other case. And then right here, if I click on it, you can see that we have three cases, or excuse me, two cases, which are a case 386 and 447. So you can see using this approach that we can identify candidates uh, via sort of a graphical uh, strategy. Okay, so um, that uh, pretty well wraps uh, up this demonstration. Again, I encourage you to download a copy of the PowerPoint. It goes into uh, more detail than I than I have covered in this video. And um, at any rate, I appreciate you watching.